Hello, it's me, Matthew David, and we are live. Let's see, if you're tuning in, just go ahead and give me a big shout out. Let me know you're here. And uh, tonight's uh, talk is going to be about how you can live in faith, and um, that brings you into the world of the supernatural. So if you're excited about that, just... Uh, Put a big Y up on the board and just say, yeah, I'm excited. And if you're not excited about that, well, then you definitely don't have to stick around. Nobody's forcing you. So let's just see who's here and let's see who's watching live. i got to tune in and see if anybody's on the board here. Um, <clears throat> just give me a second. I'm tuning this in. I've got a lot of information that's been coming my way lately. So I'm gearing up to um i'm gearing up to talk about this uh at the workshop i've got some new insights some new revelations that are coming a lot of that stuff will go into my book uh the new book that's going to come out in 2019 gold rule our master returns and i think it's going to be exciting so uh let me just give some shouts out back to you so See a lot of you guys, Elizabeth Kramer, uh, Randy Wise, Fancito, Stephen. Um, hello, everybody. Brian. Um, good to see you guys all here. Um, I am. Let's see here. So anyway, you see, if you've ever noticed that when you're in the moment of the flow, what they call the moment of now, you're actually absent from the thinking brain. The thinking mind if you will so when you're in the now you're not thinking anymore you are knowing and the whole point here is that if you realize what the presence of god is the presence of god is omnipotent omnipresent omniscient this mind is the only animating force the only true mind and I've dug deep. I mean, I've gone into the, um, you know, the ancient language and looking at the Bible in the way that, you know, it replaces the words and it's not modernized, but the old school. And it gets deep. I mean, this is a really, really deep rabbit hole. But what we want to do to make this simple is we want to look at the fruit of the spirit. Anyone who's teaching something that has merit will have the fruit of the spirit. And you know what that is, uh, that's in Galatians 5. So goodness, joy, um, you know, self-control, these things, you can look it up. But I wanna talk about particularly um, what I think is the most important aspect that is for you today. Because a lot of people are under a lot of dark and heavy uh, attacks. Um, in these days because things have gotten uh, intense. Things are increasing. The energies are increasing. The, the world is getting faster, and by and large, it's getting darker. And because it's getting darker, that means it's going to force more light. There's going to be a lot more light coming. And I'm going to talk about the five keys that can get you into the miraculous into the world of the supernatural into the realm of going beyond the five senses and you know this is something that i'm forever studying and you will probably forever study this for the rest of your life if you're seeking god <clears throat> because god is the author and the authority of miracles and god does not require your human reasoning to produce a miracle because the miracles were already done. They're already here. God's already poured out the full blessing. God doesn't require your limited finite knowledge to produce miracles. Believe it or not, as puffed up and haughty as the human species can become, believing that we're it and that we're so intelligent and that we know so much, what that intelligence has done primarily on this planet has brought us a lot of military innovation, a lot of death and destruction uh, capabilities, but not so much a lot on the, on the side of enhancing human life 
And that's what happens when technology is not rivaled with spirituality at the same level of growth. So one of the reasons why I believe God called me into the ministry and you know many other people and there's such a revival going on right now. You see, my heart is for God. My heart is wholeheartedly for God because right now on this planet, it's a revival that has to happen. Otherwise, you can kiss humanity goodbye because that's where we're at. We're at this critical point right now where we get to choose. We get to decide. See, that's the whole point. Either way, God's God. The world's going to exist with or without humans on it. That's just the way it's going to be. And so I'm going to talk to you about living in alignment with God, what I call the code of honor, because God wants you to honor God. God wants you to worship God. You were created for worship. And if you don't believe that's true and you're living in your own intellectual kingdom, thinking that you're it and that, you know, because you have a high IQ, you're smarter than God or, you know, all these dumb religious people out here that believe in some, you know, something. You might want to not approach that behavior for too long because, you know, I, I really wholeheartedly believe God has put it on my heart. God is going to smote a lot of those people. Like a lot of that is going to happen. I mean, and I'm not a fanatic. I never had this much passion as I've been have called to have now. And the reason why I'm passionate is because I've seen the miracles. I've lived in the miracles. Every time I was set free from what they call an incurable illness from the beginning. I remember when I was 12 years old. This is a good story for you because you'll see the power here. When I was 12 years old, I was very horribly depressed and I started to get acne all over my face and I, I hated my life because my father abandoned me when I was young and I really felt like I, I didn't deserve to live and I thought I was ugly and um, I thought that I was cursed and I really had a hard time. So I used to go ride my bike up to the hill and I'd slam my bike and I'd throw it down night after night after night, so angry. I used to bang my head on things and I'd, I gave myself a concussion even one time. That's how much anger I had towards myself. I hated myself. Now, that's a sin, as you know, because if you hate yourself, you also hate your creator that gave you life. I didn't know that at the time. But what happened was that was one of my first times that I heard God. I heard God a couple of times in my life, literally heard the voice of God. And so one night on the hill, um, I had had enough. I was so tired, so exhausted, just done with hating myself. And um, God just clearly said, what do you want? You know, like as in like God was had enough of hearing what I don't want. God had enough of hearing about all of my problems. Okay, God just had enough of that. And I said, well, this is what I want. I want to be attractive. I want people to like me. I want to be happy. You know, I want to be happy. And God said, well, start speaking that truth and only that truth. God literally told me this. I don't care if it was a hallucination or if it was really the voice of God because it was one of the two, but I acted on it. And because I acted on it, here's what happened. I don't know. I didn't know at the time that the Catholics have a tradition where they, they count the, uh, the rosary beads, you know, they'll count in and do the, uh, you know, or, or you do 108 times in the, you know, uh, the Indians, sometimes they do 108, you know, They'll say an affirmation or a mantra 108 times. I, did, I didn't know that. I didn't know any of this knowledge. I was 12, 13 years old at the time. But God gave me this knowledge, and I knew that I had to count on my hands, and I'd say, you know, um, what did I say? I, I used to say this. It's, it's humbling to me to say this now because it's kind of it was kind of arrogant. But I used to say I'm lean, sexy, and I'm gorgeous, and people love me. And I used to say that at 12 years old. Now, I started to say that, and when I look in the mirror, I, I literally, I went from being a person that hated to look in the mirror because I had acne so bad. People used to laugh and make fun of me. I was outcasted. People thought it was gross to hang around me because my face was so ugly, full of acne. That's how bad it was. And I used to say that, and I'd count on my hands 100 times, 
every time the thought came to my head, every time the thought came to my head, that satanic attack of you are ugly, unworthy, worthless, cockroach, all that stuff came to my head, I would counteract it because God told me to do this. God literally told me to do this. And I did it. And within like six months, I became the most popular guy in the high school. I became the star on the high school hockey team. And you know, here I was. I was like going into high school when I finally got the revelation. Was I 14, going on 15 or something like that? All of a sudden, all the girls wanted to date me. I had all the cool popularity guy friends and everything changed. Everything changed. What I had affirmed became my reality. And you know what? It has everything to do with what I'm going to tell you about the transmission tonight because the truth is, is when God knows something to be true about you, first of all, it's going to be in the word. All right. And so the first step in the five keys is you need to have some knowledge of the word. You can get the knowledge direct from God. Believe it or not, if you didn't know it was in the Bible, God can give you that knowledge direct. God does not need you to attend a sermon and listen to a preacher to give you direct knowledge if you're looking to God. You see, on that hill, I'd had enough. I was screaming out to God. I had had enough. I turned to God every night. I was First, it was anger, 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 anger. And God said, that's enough. You know, that's enough. Let me educate you. So God taught me what to do. And it worked. Changed my whole life. You know, fast forward, I had to go through all those other things. I went through the, the eating disorders in the twinkling of an eye that was gone. Overnight, consciousness just evaporated it. God set me free in, in an instant. It was gone. Then, you know, the PTSD and the panic attacks, um, agoraphobic for a few months. All of these things were awful. I didn't like any of it. But you know what? God can set you free from any of those afflictions instantly. And that's what you need to know. But you need to know how to activate miracles. And you know what the best part about it was? I went through uh, two bankruptcies, too. I had to go through two bankruptcies. And I, you know, I was always bad with money. In my, in my past, I was the worst. I was the worst with money. I never had any. Everybody laughed at me and my family because I'd always tell them how rich I was going to be. And they'd say, yeah, right, you? They're like, <laughs> you don't have any money. You're always begging for money. Because I was. I was always begging for money. But you know what? I found the scripture. I, I figured it. Some mentor just happened to pass it along to me. And what I did as I used these five keys that I'm going to teach you. And I stood on the foundation of God and I was bold enough to trust God wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly trusted God. And that's the common denominator of every one of my healings and, and my prosperity is I finally wholeheartedly trusted God. What Jesus said, I trusted it. I believed finally. And I received, I did. You know, many millions of dollars later, financial, you know, um, success in many businesses. Now, is my life perfect? Of course not. Nobody's life's ever going to be perfect. You're not out of the storm just because you manifest. Look at how many healings I've had to do. You see, I've always had to demonstrate faith. And I believe that God has made that part of this human reality. We will always have to demonstrate our faith one way or the other. You're going you're gonna to believe your fears and your doubts and your anger and all of this human flesh carnal instinct, or you're going to believe what God said is true about you. Now, whether you get that direct from God or you get it from the word of God, you have a choice. And the choice is going to determine the outcome because that's what your free will is for. It's for you to make a choice and to decide. Hello, it's Amanda with Alpha Upgrade. This is my favorite ritual. Mmm. Mocaine is a chocolate fat burning energy boosting formula that allows you to crush it. Mocaine is packed with adaptogens, minerals, and vitamins to help you combat stress, always on your A game. It has brain boosting power ingredients like bacopa, 
lytriosine, and more for the ultimate dopamine rush. Hence the name, Mocaine. So let's get here to the point. And let me tell you what I discerned here. So the first thing is you need to hear the word, period. Because hearing, by hearing comes faith, all right? So by hearing comes faith. I literally heard God a few times in my life literally speak. And that instantly triggered my faith every time, every time. Now, I've also heard the word as long as listening to people speak the word. And because I received it and I believed it, I demonstrated it. And with prosperity, that was significant for me because that was not a direct impartation from God when I received that. But it was all the same power, all of the same transformative power. And you have access to do this right now in your life. So think of anything in your life that you want to transform. You have a money, health, or relationship problem. It's always one of the three. And I'll tell you that you really only have one problem. Your relationships. That's it. Your relationship with God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, yourself. And I will tell you this. In my heart of hearts, you know, the more I've gotten deeper into this knowledge, because I had a firsthand experience uh, when I accepted Jesus into my life and I felt it, I literally felt like electricity shot through me and I didn't know what happened. It was a supernatural experience. I wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus means salvation. And I truly believe that that presence, that being um, has the infallible capability of reaching anyone at any time. And that's my, my belief. You can believe what you want, but that's my belief. Now, when you hear the word, faith comes. Now, faith is your super power that takes you into the world of the supernatural. All right? Faith is your key to the doorway of the supernatural. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, reasoning is your way that you shut the door of the supernatural and put yourself into a finite, limited reality. And that finite, limited reality is okay, but it's not God's will. That is not God's will for your life. That is your will for your life. I repeat, your reasoning is not God's will for your life. Your reasoning is your will for your life. Now, your will may not be bad. It may not be good. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not capable of judging you. I'm not the God of all creation. But I will tell you this. You judge you. That's right. You will end up judging you. So if you are living in, in your reasoning mind, by its own very nature, the reasoning mind is judging itself and cutting off the miracles. So if life is hunky-dory and let's say you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year or a million or five million dollars a year and you're very, very intelligent and you're living through that reasoning mind, I promise you this. At some point in your life, God's going to test you and you're going to have to come to the cross one way or the other. You're going to have to come through suffering or you're going to have to come through wisdom. And if you come through suffering, that was my journey with many illnesses, is that I always had to keep coming back to remember that my mind is not it. You see, my blessings, my curse. I was endowed with a very, a very uh, astute intellect. I can really grasp things very, very fast. And that's a curse because of when I used to live through that intellect, I always thought I could manipulate and control everything. And because I'm smarter, I, could, I can get away with and et cetera, et cetera. You can't get away with anything. It doesn't matter how smart you think you are. The creator is so much smarter than any human on this planet. So you might as well just come to the realization that God's will is so much greater than your will. And if you do come to that revelation, then you can really take no thought for your life. You can do what the master Jesus said. Take no thought for your life. Okay. Now, when you're outside of thought and you're in the now space, in the present, to the present, of the presence of God, right here, right now, 
then what you can do is you can begin speaking what God has said to be true about you because every word out of the mouth of God was created. And so when you speak what God said to be true about you, you come into alignment with God. And when you do that, that's how you win the battle between the flesh of your sinful nature, which is your fallen state, your six degrees of separation in your mind, through your five senses, in a delusion of material reality that separates you from everyone and everything, which is an impossible capability when you realize that omnipresence is omnipresent. And if you're not part of omnipresence, then you don't exist. You see, it's a complete dream. It's the Adam dream of consciousness. Okay. We know what the Garden of Eden story talks about. And, you know, I can show you in the Pseudepigrapha, the ancient biblical texts, when the words were put back in about the otherworldly beings, the archons and the aeons and all these things. It doesn't matter which version you read, whether it's the King James Version or the Pseudepigrapha, you're going to come to the eternal truth is that no matter where it shows up, if it's omnipresent, it will always be present in all the scriptures, no matter which versions you read. Okay, so what is omnipresent? Well, life is omnipresent. And what is the nature of that life? Well, why don't you just look at the fruit of the Spirit? The nature of God is in Galatians 5. It's the fruit of the Spirit. In John 4, 24, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. It's not John. It's, maybe it is. Yeah, I think it's John 4, 24. God is spirit, not material. So the whole thing here is that I always say it. It's so simple. But to really understand it, you have to demonstrate it, and you have to know it to be true. You never left heaven. You did not leave heaven. That's an Adam dream. Okay, you're dreaming this. It's not a dream. Wake up. Wake up. You never left heaven. You never had a physical life. Never for one minute have you had a physical life in the five senses. That's a false error conclusion based on mass hypnosis and cultural programming throughout many, 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 many hundreds and thousands of years. That is a delusion. Okay, that's the serpent tale. That is the fallen state of man, the Adam dream. So you never left heaven. You never had a physical life. Okay. So what is the reality? Well, what God has spoken is what has been created. And it is the only thing that has been created. It's the only truth of your life. So in the, um, the new Testament, that's all about spirit. Okay. That's all about the spirit. That's all about Jesus talking about the spirit. You know, it's every, all of it. It's all about your life and spirit. I can look at any one of the one any one of those books and tell you the truth. So what you contemplate matters. What you contemplate matters. When you contemplate how God is beyond your idea of perfection, your five senses idea of perfection will always clothe itself in human understanding. So your five senses cannot contemplate how perfect God truly is. So it's, it's futile to even try. The only thing you can do is become present to the present and allow that to become more ingrained in your nature. And it becomes more of you and it starts to bring more consciousness in you and it starts to raise you up. See, that's you laying down your will for God's will. That's called humility. Humility is to step outside of your wants, pleasures, and passions. And those are all, if you look at the pseudepigrapha, if you look at the original biblical text, all of your desires, passions, and lusts, and all these things are all demonic. All of them. Every single one of them. God will give you all of the desires of your heart. The true desires of your heart, God will give them all to you. God is the author of all of them, and God is spirit, never material. God is outside of your five senses, 
and yet God is omnipresent. So you can be present with God and you can receive all of these blessings for you. Now, in my five-step process, number one is hear the word. Number two is faith comes from hearing the word. Number three is you must act on that faith. For instance, when I demonstrated the money miracle and I went from being um, poverty stricken for most of my life uh, to becoming very, very prosperous, it was because I heard the word, okay? I knew what Malachi 3.10 verse said, you know, is that bring ye the tithe into the storehouse so that there may be meat in mine house and prove me that I shall not pour out a blessing so much so that you can't contain it. Boom, just that one thing right there, that one thing. I received it, and then I spoke it every time. Every time I was tempted to come into fear and doubt because my five senses were looking at the illusion of lack, okay? Every time I'd say, oh, no, I'm in deep. You know what? I'm afraid. I don't think I'm going to have – all this fear comes. No, that's not true. God is eternal. God doesn't separate itself at any point in the universe. Therefore, as is, always is. It will always, always and forever be true. Incorruptible. God is incorruptible, infallible, and the human mind is the opposite. So I stood on the incorruptible truth, not on the corruptible, finite illusion. So every time temptation of fear and lack and worry would come, I'd say, uh-uh, I brought the tithe into the storehouse. God has promised to prosper me. God cannot fail. My miracle is at hand. You see, I began speaking what God knew to be true about me, and only that, only that, you know, if I had a moment of weakness, that's okay. Some days I've had moments, you know, going into this process. I've been at it for 10 years where I would say, oh, man, what the hell? This isn't working, blah, blah, blah. I get so down on myself, and I'd say, what? I'd say, that's complete stupidity. That's just my ego, my ego trying to tempt me. That's the ego trying to take me away from the blessing. I get back in the blessing by speaking what God knows to be true, getting back to the present, and then acting on that faith, acting. I kept acting on the faith. And you know what? God has never, ever, 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 ever let me down. Never. Not once. Not once in 10 years. Not a single time. I want you to receive that. I want you to receive the fact that in spite of me, in spite of my human erring emotional hijackings and logic, God has never once let me down, not a single time. You see, if you can receive that, then you know that there is a power that has a nature that is unlike anything that you can comprehend because from your earthly human standpoint, you can't comprehend that. You had a father, maybe you had one like mine that was completely not a good father. Okay, so maybe you believe in your recesses of your mind that, oh, well, this God must be capable of really shafting me. That's not the God, that's not God. You, don't, you know what, when that idea comes to my mind, I say, I don't serve that God. That God is a false idol. That God is a projection of my mind. My mind and my five senses know nothing of the real God. My heart, my heart is after the real God. And God always tests the hearts of men and women. God tests the hearts. And God knows my heart is for God. And because my heart is for God, I have ma re maintained the covenant. Listen, there are two types of people in this world. People who believe they can and people who believe they can't. I'm pretty sure you already know who I am. You see this? This. Mocaine. Mocaine. This is my secret. 
You know, probably you never heard of it because you are、uh, swinging around your local coffee shop and congregate with the sheep. <laughs> What's wrong with you anyway?、Hmm? So what you waiting for? Go on mokane.com, and little Tony will ship you some little baggies, risk free to try out. You should be killing it. You should be living like me. You should be living like me. But you ain't right. You're missing this. This is the secret. This is the fuel to complete your mission. I'm putting powder all over the streets. I don't want to hear any more excuses. Okay? You work for me now. I want you to be my customer. Go on mokane.com and do the mokane miracle morning. I'm not gonna ask you again. I'm not gonna ask you again. And so that covenant's not just for money; it's for everything. Knowing what God said about your health, God said, "Just look at the scripture. You need to know what it says." And look it up, and then act on it. So then, the fifth key. So let me recap this. Number one, hear the word. Then faith comes. Then you act on the faith. Okay, one, two, three, and then four. You speak only what is true, based on what God said to be true. You got to be very, very careful with your mouth. You really do. If you ever go into places where people are extremely poor,、uh, a lot of poverty, just listen to their mouths. That's where their faith is. What your mouth is 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 babbling is a, is a clue to where your faith is. Your mouth gives away your faith. Period. Your mouth. And so, what I notice when I'm around a lot of people who are very prosperous, I notice the conversations a lot different. I notice I like the conversation a lot better. And yet, the people who have not, because. Human error is to always judge other people and to project your own sin onto other people. They're always condemning the people that have plenty. They're always talking about how evil they are. Well, who's the evil one? The one condemning the other person, or the one that I can't tell who the evil one is. All I can see is the evil coming out of the mouth of the person. And so when I see the evil coming out of the mouth of the person, I know that I'm looking at the evil one. Do you see what I'm saying? When I see the evil out of the mouth of the person, I know that I'm looking at the evil one, regardless of who they are speaking about. Now, I want you to receive this because let me give you an example. Let's say, let's say I want to teach my son about dating, and let's say that I say, you know, George. When you get older, you're going to be interested in, in dating, and let's assume you know he's straight. He's going to want to date a woman. Okay, that's an assumption. I don't know, but let's assume. And I'm going to say, George, the words that come out of her mouth, if she comes to you and says, "Oh, my ex was so bad to me, so aw, so so bad, so bad," and the other one before that, he was like such a real loser, just a real piece of you know what. And and the one before that, oh man, what a tyrant he was! I'd say, George, take all the other people out of the equation, and tell me what is the fruit of that mouth? What is the fruit of the mouth making the allegations? I'd say, if you want that fruit in your life, then entertain it, because you will become the burden of those allegations too. Because who was always at the scene of the crime every time that victim showed up? Because that mouth created it. I hope you just received that. Now, if someone comes along and says, "Oh, gosh, you know the last the last guy I was with, he was a great guy. You know, just we just didn't get along. We didn't see eye to eye. So you know, we're still friends. We're in good terms." Much better fruit coming out of that mouth. Might be hope on that one, and you better make sure that this woman honors her mother and father, because God has commanded each one of us to honor our mother and father. Now, my my father may have abandoned me, but I still honor my father, because who am I to judge? When I came into wisdom, I realized, well, 
I realized after be becoming just like him when I said I used to condemn him. See, I, I used to condemn my father growing up. You see, I used to speak all that evil about him. You see, I used to speak all that evil. He's such a loser. He's such a, you know, he abandoned me. What a terrible guy. He's a bad person. Guess what? At age 19, I got to become him. I got to become him. I ended up losing my first um, daughter that I had. I had to sign over full custody and lose that relationship because I became my dad. Because I told my whole life, I cursed him. But you know what? Who was the one cursing? Right here. Right here. This mouth did it. This mouth did it. So you got to be careful what comes out of your mouth because you're going to live in the words that come out of your mouth. And so the other thing I want you to know is when you sit there and you watch these fear porn on the internet and you're condemning all these people on the planet that are bad people and they're here to, all right, well, if you understand that all things are for good, all things are created for good because God created all things, says so in the Bible, then who are you to judge what happens? Who are you to judge what happens? See, fear porn makes you broke. I talked about that, you know, in one of my messages a long time ago. And, and it's true because I don't know anybody that watches that crap and that lives in that crap that has prosperity. I don't know anybody. Now, they say, well, I'm just going to be informed. I have to be informed. Informed of what? What are you becoming informed about? about how you can't move without being poisoned, about how you can't trust anybody or anything, about how you um, are about to be, you know, um, taken away to a FEMA camp. I mean, I mean, is that, is that the reality that you want to live in? Because when you start speaking it, you make that your reality. When you start speaking it, it becomes your reality. So what came first, the chicken or the egg? Because I would suggest to you that the temptation from the enemy, from Satan, is to put that out there for you to buy into it and to give your power to it so that you can align with that and you can become one with that reality. And your faith will make sure of it because it will supernaturally cause it to happen. We are not to know the things of the fruit, the tree of good and, you know, the good and evil, right? All that is, is just recreating the same Adam circumstance all over again. You are to do this. This is what you're supposed to do. By the way, MatthewDavidHurtado.com, because my fifth step is to learn my three, two, one prosperity formula. And I'll tell you why. Because when you get right in your pocketbook, many times you get right in your body too. That's what happened with me. I had to get it all together because I wouldn't be able to continue to have the freedom I do to do what I love to do without having the finances. I would be under the burden of the Babylonian system, which I teach you how to break free from because it's been taught throughout the ages. It's biblical. And that's key number three. Number two is all about forgiveness. See, if you don't forgive and you don't stop judging, then guess what happens? you lose your faith. And when you lose your faith, a really, really bad thing happens. It goes the other way and you start putting your faith in your doubt. And that is satanic. When you put your faith, faith in your doubt, then you are bound and enslaved and ensnared by the enemy. Okay. Now, when you forgive, then guess what? You get your faith back. When you forgive, you get your faith back. It's not ensnared. It's not bound anymore. You get it back. Then you get to choose. If you don't forgive, your faith no longer belongs to you. It belongs to your enemy. And then the first part is so important. I talk about following the fastest path to your joy in every moment. This is more important than you know. And I put it down here in my notes. Let me tell you why. If you have no joy, you have no focus, and you have no strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If you have no joy, you have no strength. And guess what? If you have no strength, you have no trust in God. If you have no strength, you have no trust in God. I want you to receive that. 
You see, I didn't make this stuff up. I didn't, I didn't come up with a pipe dream to sell you guys some uh, fiction story about how to, you know, talk to aliens and this and that and all this other stuff that's out there in the new age. I don't even deal with the new age. Do I believe in aliens? Of course I do. Do I care about when they're going to land? No, because I don't believe they're all benevolent because I'm not that naive. What I believe in is I believe in what's eternally omnipresent throughout all of the teachings. God is. The nature of God is increase and blessing. That's what you need to know. And you want to become more of that nature. And you're commanded to not serve any other gods before God. That's the Ten Commandments, okay? You need to honor God and honor others. That's why I call it the Code of Honor. The Code of Honor is that I honor God and I honor others as God. And if you are willing to do that and to serve no other gods, especially fear, doubt, worry, and all the other devices that try to do one thing, here's, here's what it is. You need to get this. More important than you know. Every one of these false idols has one purpose, one purpose that takes you out of your birthright, which is the realm of the supernatural. It's to take you out of your joy. Because when you are out of your joy, the whole house of cards collapses and you are done because you no longer have any trust and you no longer have any strength so when you lose your joy, you're done. So every one of these worries that comes to you and it shows up, you're going to be tested. You need to do what all of the masters have always done. All of the great sages and masters who have known and demonstrated the fruit of prosperity, which is health, wealth, happiness, and all of the above, they have fought the good fight, diligently to hold their joy. In spite of what's happening, they hold their joy because the joy of the Lord is their strength. It is their connection to the supernatural. You cannot connect to the faith required to be in the supernatural with no joy. Joy needs to be your dominant vibration. And if you don't know how to get there, I suggest you quickly learn. It's very simple. Ask and answer the question. What's the fastest path to my joy in this moment? And do it. Take the word and have faith and do it. Have faith that that's what God's will for you is. God's will for you is an attitude, not a place. God's will for you is an attitude, not a place. The attitude of joy. Because God gives you all of your strength in that place. And when you're outside of it, you're being robbed. The first thing Satan destroys is your joy. Because if he destroys your joy, and I say he because that's the five senses trying to personify something it can't understand. But the, the satanic attack is to steal your joy. And then after your joy is gone, everything else is gone. Your money, your body health, your relationships, all of it. You have to fight in every moment to protect your joy. You need to stand strong in God's word, knowing that when you choose God's word over your fear and your doubt and your worry and your temptation to put other false idols in front of you, your own lustful desires. Knowing that God's will for you was never a place but an attitude, what is the fastest path to my joy in this moment? And do it. Then ask and answer the question again and do it. And ask and answer the question again and do it. And I suggest if you, yeah, the thief comes to steal, rob, and kill. Once he stole your joy, he will rob and kill everything in your life. And I know this because whenever I lost my joy, everything else started to go too. The money, the health, the relationships, all of it. And I suggest if you can do it, 
you come to one of my workshops. The last one this year is in November, November 9th, 10th, and 11th at allowuniversity.com. You can get an overview about that because I will teach you the self entrainment technique and I'll show you how to use your physiology and your neurology to anchor in and to live from a place of joy and to combat the vibrational turbulence that is so easy to dismay people. People get knocked out of their joy so easy these days because nobody has an attention span anymore. You know, one of my friends, she's probably listening now, she just told me she has ADHD. Well, you and everybody else on the planet because the technological revolution brought that into existence because the average human has the less, less of an attention span than a goldfish now. So everybody has it. So don't put yourself into that label. Don't give yourself a label. ADHD is a blessing. It is a blessing because you didn't need that mind anyway. So just drop the whole thing and be present to the present and realize you never had to think at all other than choose what the fastest path to your joy is and be open to receive God's blessing because the nature of God is blessing and increase. God will bless you in the most mysterious of ways when you're present to the present. And your mind can't your mind can't come up with those miracles. Never. Your mind can't do that. Your mind thinks it can. It thinks it can control other people, that it can manipulate reality, that it can do all of these wonderful things. But your mind, like Bashar says, is a steering wheel, not even hooked up to the car. So your mind's like, oh, let's go this way. Wait, let's go this way. Wait, wait, let's go this way. Oh, shh can't do anything because it's not hooked up. And so the more time you spend in it, guess what? You become more unconscious. That's the laws of electricity. You become more and more unconscious. present you become very conscious and you're also available to tap into parallel vibrations frequencies that is parallel universes one day science is going to recognize that you know this whole space travel thing is all about frequency alignment that's how ufos travel they align with a certain signature frequency and they dial it in and once they do that it just quantum jumps that's why when you watch ufos on footage they don't just fly like planes, they go like this. When they take off, they go and they just move from point A to point B. That's frequency alignment. That's what I teach in self entrainment. I teach you how to frequency align yourself to the utmost moment of power and joy so that your resonant vibration dominantly expresses that into the universe. And what's so cool about it is um, one of my uh, colleagues, uh, Matt, his name is too, sent me this email today about how they, he sent me a classified document from the CIA or something where it's been released uh, back in 2010. They released it about how this stuff is not fiction. This is reality. Well, of course it's reality. It was talked about way back in the Bible. It's been known long before there, there ever was a CIA. I mean, this has been known forever. And so this is where it's at. Now, I've given the transmission to you. Now let's go ahead and let's entertain some questions and let's go ahead and see who's out there. And uh, I want to hear your questions. So start putting them up there. I'll put some of these up here. Um, so we got sets. Yep. So sets, self entrainment technique. I call it sets. You're doing sets. I teach you how to do sets like you do in the gym. You know why? Because repetitions is repetitioning the mind. And what you're doing is you're creating new neural pathways. That's what you're doing. That's what you're actually doing. You're reinforcing a dominant vibration that brings about a change in the physical, you know, structure of the non-physical body that you believe is physical. All right. So here's a question. What was number five? Number five is to go 
to my site, Matthew David Hurtado, and make sure you know the three, two, one formula for prosperity. You know, here's the thing. You're probably going to hear me talk about that a thousand times. And it's because if you're not doing it, then you, you, you don't know it. That's the whole point. If you're not doing it, you, you have no knowledge of it. You may think you do, but when you actually begin doing it and you get the fruit of doing it, your whole life changes. And that's why I keep talking about it because when your whole life changes, well, now you know, that's when you know. So everybody who does these things, you know, like they, they say things over and 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 over because that's how people learn is that you don't hear it the first 385 times I say it, but finally on 386, you're like, you know, maybe your life, you know, suddenly, you know, dropped manure on you and you're like, oh my, I got to do something new. I'm open to it. I'm out of my mind. Let's do this. And then when you start doing it, then you get the result, you know, from doing enough repetitions. All right. So, all right. So we got, uh, this is my first vid. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm here to serve. I am the minister of allowing. So this is my, this is my life purpose. This is what I do. I have to surrender my will for God's will. And I don't mind doing that at all because I don't even want anything that I've ever created in my life because I want what God has in store for me because I know it's much greater than I could ever have dreamed of having. And that's what I want. I want the peace that comes from being in God's presence and the prosperity that Christ had. See, Christ had real prosperity. Christ didn't build up earthly treasures. Christ never talked about how he had you know, $50 million in his uh, Swiss bank account because God, he never put his faith in that structure. But whenever he needed the money, whenever he needed it at will, on demand, he could just demonstrate it, just demonstrate it on, on demand, just manifest it right into existence. And also all of these things that he did, you should do in greater. That's where my heart's at. My heart's at becoming that. And you know what? I've done it through the tithing. And somebody said tithing on here. I've done it through that because I've always, you know, what God always speaks to me now because now I listen. So God told me, you know, a few months ago to increase my tithes. And he said to do some, some level that to me was scary. And I thought, I don't think I can do this. I, God, you're scaring me. I don't know if this is you, God, or is this Satan trying to tempt me into doing something stupid? And I said, oh, that's my reasoning mind again. That's not my, that's not it. And so I increased the ties and, you know, the things that have come into my life, first of all, it's miraculous. It's just, it's, that's what happens when you live in obedience. Obedience to God is disobedience to Satan and vice versa. So when I started to be obedient and I really listened, the blessings just keep pouring. Um, I'll tell you more about the blessings when I feel ready to reveal some of them. But for right now, that's, you don't need to know that. All right, so here's another one. So Matthew, how do we find joy when we are really stuck, like deep in debt, trying, but wheel spinning? How do we figure the one thing that we start to build on the springboards to the next and turns it all around? Okay, you, you know my story, you know I've been there. What do you think it's like having Lyme disease so bad that you can't walk and you don't have a job, you're living in the middle of nowhere and you have nothing? I want you to take that whole story about you being deep in debt and wheel spinning, and I want you to just throw it out the window. That's a bunch of crap. That's a bunch of lies. That's your mind. It's your ego. That is your ego ensnaring you through the five senses, through the 666. You're bound and ensnared by that. That's what this whole transmission is about. You remember, okay, here's what, here, let me give you the short answer. You need, to, you need to become present to the present. And when God tells you to do something, when that voice within that comes, it's a feeling, you'll feel a feeling of peace about it. Like, you know, you'll feel a feeling of assurance that it can't be wrong, but yet it will also challenge you. Your mind won't like it one bit. See, you'll know God's present when the heart and the mind are at war with each other, okay? Because God will tell you to do something. And this will want, this, this does not want to do it at all. Because this is what's messing your whole life up. This is what got you in that position. When the wheels are spinning and you're in debt, this is what got you there, right here. This is how you got there. When you realize this is what did it to you, 
you're going to stop listening to this. This doesn't have a clue. So I told you what to do. First thing is you need to get the scripture. You need to get the word. Then you need to, you know, receive it. That's the faith and that you need to act on it. Live by the seed. My short answer to you is to live by the seed. What you put out comes back, period. When you come from smallness, you get smallness. You know, when you come from smallness, you get smallness. You know, the example of this. Okay. God told me to do this. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna be humble with you. Okay. I don't recommend you do anything outside of your faith. So this is not advice. It's definitely not financial advice. I'm not here to do that for you. I'm not a financial advisor. But when when God when God told me that all of the money that I brought in, I needed to tie up all of it for the, for a month. He told me to do that, all of it. And I did. I tithed it all. I tithed all of it. Okay. I'm talking about like my ministry receives donations. Okay. My ministry receives donations. He said to tithe all of it. Don't, don't keep any of it. Tithe every single bit of it up. And I did. I, I obeyed God, period. It unleashed multiple times in many ways that I couldn't have imagined of blessings to come back, including multiple of the money. And God still continues to tell me to tie that up because God is testing me to see if he can trust me. You see, I don't care. If God says it, I do it. And if you say, well, I can't hear God. I don't know what God is. It's because you're in your mind. You're not going to hear God when you're in your mind. you got to become present to the present. You have to be present. Meditate if you have to. Focus on your breath. People say, how do I become present to the present? Do the box breath. In through your nose, five seconds. Hold at the top, five seconds. Out through your nose, five seconds. Hold at the bottom, five seconds. What that'll do after about one to three minutes is it will drop the brain waves from this programmed high beta brain wave, this high anxiety brain wave, drop it down into a slightly alpha state, okay? Slightly alpha. And then what'll happen is then you are amenable to your own programming and your own suggestion, and then start speaking God's truth from that state. Start speaking God's truth. And when you start doing that, your prayer will not go unanswered because when you come into alignment with God, God will give you the desires of your heart. Ask for wisdom. Ask for God to give you. Ask in the name of Jesus. And let me pray for you right now. I want you to receive this. I'm going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to pray for all of you willing to listen. Anybody that wants to listen, I ask God in the name of Jesus right now that everyone who is ready to receive this, receives this by the Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom, the gift of understanding, and supernatural faith to be unleashed in your life right now, to unlock doors that your mind can never unlock, and to receive miracles that you've been praying for and asking for. And I ask this in the name of Jesus, Receive this. Receive it now. Amen. You see, I have authority to pray that over you, and you have authority to pray that because that's God's will for you. I'm not asking for anything God doesn't will for you. I'm asking for what God wants for you, and I'm coming into alignment with you in that space. And that's where the power is at. That's all there is to it. All right. So, yes. Okay, good. We got people receiving here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord, I receive. Ask for wisdom. Yes, ask for wisdom. If you want riches, you better ask for wisdom. Don't ask for riches. Ask for wisdom, and God will give you wisdom, and wisdom will attract riches. Okay, the riches are God's presence. God's presence is the ultimate riches. All right, then speak God's truth from that state. Yes, that's right. Drops to brain waves. Correct. Um, let's look at this one. Humble God told me all of the money I brought in, tithe it all. That's right. That's right. 
And God still, God still told me today, I was planning another tithe and God said to tithe, I, I had my tithe ready, God said, double it. And I did. Do I care where it comes from? It's not even me. I'm not doing it. I'm not even really, see, that's the thing is we've got to get out of your human understanding. Faith is outside of your human understanding. Your human understanding is your mind, it's your intellect. It's the box you live in. So here's what I do. Every time my little mind starts to fear because I'm going to sow in proportion to that which I want to receive. That's biblical. That's scriptural. As you give, it's given back to you. And in proportion to the level of giving. If you have little, but you give much from the little, you're better off than the person who has a lot and gives miserly. You understand that, that's biblical. Well, when God talks to me about a seed, God has a harvest on his mind, and I know that. And I am quick to jump on that train because I know that that's what I'm after. I'm after God's fullness. And so I do that, that's what I do, period. That's what I do. And people say, well, how do you combat the fear? And I say this, there are people out there that can afford to write a check for a hundred million dollar custom Boeing 747 plane. And if God has created wealth in a capacity where they can receive that, then what the heck am I afraid about when God says to go ahead and sew up this little bit? <laughs> I mean, let's get real here. God can prosper anyone in any circumstance. And God is the only source of prosperity. And that includes your health. Prosperity is health and all of the things you need, all of it. All right, so let's look at what else we got on the board here. God's wholeness, seed equals harvest. You, you, you're right. You sure are right. That's right. You live by the seed principle. Prosperity is living by the seed, okay? Most people in life live from the need and not the seed. And so, therefore, when you live from the need, Guess what you get? More need. When you live from need, you get more need. In other words, oh, I'm so needy. I'm so needy. Let me go see if I can get some more scraps. What you're doing is you are impregnating quanta. You know, let's go metaphysic here. You're impregnating the universe with a vibration of lack. And so from the vibration of lack, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get more lack. And that's why there's so much lack on the planet, and yet there is no lack. It's, a, it's an illusion. You can't measure and scale and quantify lack because even if you say you're a trillion dollars in debt, it's still a trillion. There is no lack. It's just the trillion is on the wrong side of the ledger. All right? So when you come from the universe, like that's why God challenges my faith, says give, give more. So when I give more, I'm coming from strength. I'm coming from power. I'm coming from an unlimited supply because that's what I'm doing is I'm stretching my faith. I'm stretching my faith so I can come from a bigger, more unlimited capacity. And in the beginning, it was hard to give a $20 tithe in the beginning when I first started or a seed or somebody that needed something and I helped out, you know, that was hard in the beginning. Okay. And then, you know, I, I made my first million back in 2013. Well, actually 2012, but 2013 was the first seven figure year. And I remember the tithes was like, you know, I was like, oh man, every week. And I was begrudgingly giving those tithes. I really was. And guess what? God took that income away from me a year later. I had to rebuild all that. God took that income away from me because I was not honoring God. I was actually a little upset. I got a little upset because I got ego filled and I thought it was all me. You know, look at how great Matthew Hurtado is. He's so smart. You know what happened? Nothing start, Nothing was working anymore. Nothing. All of my old tricks and all my old marketing things and I thought I was so smart, none of it worked. None of it. And instantly I went from like one point. 2 million or whatever down to like 180,000 or whatever. And 
Now you might say, well, at least you weren't uh, on the poorhouse. I'd say, okay. When you get on a um, when you get on a three a three three rung step stool, three feet high, and you jump off, not so scary. But when you get on a thirty story building and you jump down and you you know then you're on the three foot, um, it's a death to your ego. When you go from making a lot and you're very successful and you and you you lose it, um, it really hurts. And God uses those experiences to humble you. God will humble you. God humbled me many times because I'm telling you from experience where I went wrong. I need you to know this because even when you get the blessing, you can lose it just as fast as you got it. I've been there in and out. That's why I'm telling you this. All right. And so when I finally got my heart right again, I started to get prosperous again. So just so you know. So a question, asked in the group but haven't checked for the answer, is using food coupons or turning in bottles for deposits paid coming from lack or good sense to save money? Oh, that's a good question. You know, here's one of the best tricks in the planet to keep the, to keep the sheep in line is they always change the price of gas all the time. Have you noticed that? I can always tell lack programming when I listen to people talk about the price of gas. Do you know how small-minded that is when you realize how much wealth is on this planet? I don't care if the gas is $3 a gallon or $7 a gallon. I don't. You know why? Because it's trivial. It's trivial. When you're in alignment with what God wants for you, you don't live from a small perspective. That's not God's will for you. God's will for you is increase in blessing. And so... If it shows up in your hologram and you're smoke and, and you're focused on how that's going to make or break your day, you're not living from an unlimited source anymore. You're living from a finite source. Now it's okay to know the details, and business is about knowing the little details because you scale up to the big details. I get that. So it's not lack to turn in things to get money, you know, to recycle and all that. That's not lack. That's not lack. It's okay to be smart and to be diligent, but here's what is lack. When, when you start arguing and start letting it ruin your day because the price of gas went from $2 or $3 to $5, if, you, if that ruins your day, you're not living in the right prosperity. You're not, you're not there, and, and that's, a, that's a heart condition because God can fix that, all right? Um, thank, thank you, God, because... Thank you. I, I, I hate hearing about I just hate hearing about the price of gas. That's one of the common tricks in the matrix to get people into lack programming, by the way. All right. Yeah, that's right. I like the analogy you gave about running out of hugs. Exactly. Because God is infinite. And you're not afraid to run out of hugs. So if I went to the gas station and it was three hugs for a gallon of gas, and I had to go in, and let's say I had to put in 10 gallons, and I'm like, 30 hugs. Cool, we're good. I'm out. Uh, price goes up next day. It's four, it's four hugs. And I'm sitting there at the pump, and I'm like, this is crap. I can't believe this. Like, if I have to give – how am I ever going to make it in this world if I have to give that extra – I just don't know what I'm going to do. I, You know – my job only gives me four hugs an hour, and if I have to give four hugs, I, I, I'm not going to make it. See, what you are is you're falling into a trap. You're falling into a trap of thinking that your source is your job and your, your supply is the fruit of that job. It's not. God can give you much, much, much more. So remove the idea that money is hard or finite. Just get rid of all that because God can get everything you need into your hands, including money, including people that, you know, you need to meet and, and ideas that you need to have in order to manifest that money, all of that stuff, all of it. So I love when you say that's a heart condition. It always deeply touches something in my soul. It is a heart condition. It's a heart condition. Who do you love? Do you love money or do you love God? 
do you love, uh, you know, do you love watching, um, you know, the Kavanaugh stuff every single day, every day, all day about how he sinned? Well, guess what? So have you. You sin too. Oh, well, he went and raped somebody. That's what they say. So what? You sinned and all sin is sin. So why are you hung up on the dot? Why are you stuck on it? Why, why do you give it your time and attention? Why do you care? Because that's what they want. And who's they? It's the world of the five senses that was birthed out of the human mind that created institutions of human minds that are all designed to keep you stuck to the human Babylonian system. Forgiveness is how you get out of it. And faith is how you unlock supernatural blessings that are already here, already present in the present for you, already been stored up for you. It's already here for you, all of it. Everything is here for you right now. I'm here to remind you how to unlock it. All right. I like this because India gas price is increasing minute by minute. Well, they're doing some definite mind programming for you then, okay? That's what's going on. It's uh, it's all a mind job to get you to focus on the fear, okay? Because here's what I want you to understand. Here's what I want you to understand. What's the fruit of that? The fruit of that is fear, isn't it? If they say, oh, the price of gas is going up. It's going up so fast. It's going up so fast. What is it causing people? It causes fear, right? Well, who gave you a spirit of fear? God didn't give you a spirit of fear, so who did? The other person, the other thing, the other principality of darkness. And that principality of darkness, by its very nature, is ignorance and evil. And you don't serve that. So when you say, oh, well, it, I guess that's what we're doing now. All right, God, so I guess just go ahead and bring in the increase because I got to buy gas. You know that. And then you believe that for faith that God provides. And then you just trust. And what will happen is that trust unlocks what already is. And the increase shows up. How do you like that? That's how it works. I'm Chris with Complete Essentials. Do you want to feel your best every day? Not sure what vitamins or supplements to use? Minerals are the currency of life. Minerals are the most important fuel our bodies require. Without minerals, vitamins cannot work. Shockingly, most people are deficient because our food supply lacks what we need. Discover the fuel your body needs to get moving again and reap the life-changing benefits. Our free mineral secrets course, Monotomia, is the answer. Health means everything, so go to monotomia.com and get the info now. All right, so what else we got on the board? Believe and lean not on your understanding. Doubt comes to Rob. Absolutely. All right, well, guess what, guys? It's 9-11, and uh, I should go ahead and close this broadcast. So thank you so much for uh, tuning in. And again, watch this again. It is, you, the purpose here is to feed your faith. And once your faith is built up, then stuff starts to happen because it starts to come out of you. So uh, anyway, um, that's all I wanted to leave you guys with. And uh, we'll tune in again um, Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. So take care, everyone. God bless and love you.